Because we are hearing that we do have the 8 a.m. advisory now with Lisette Gonzalez, yeah. so let's get right over to her. That's right, Lauren and Eugene. And as of the 8 a.m. advisory, uh, Irma is weakened because of the fact that it is interacting with Cuba here, and it's just hitting the northern coast of the island hard right now. So here it is. The 8 a.m. advisory is showing that it's still Category 4. However, the max sustained winds have decreased to 130 miles per hour. However, the Hurricane Center is saying, and we're also anticipating that Irma, although it's weakening now because it is moving, here over some of the mountainous terrain of Cuba, restrengthening is anticipated because of the fact that it is going to likely be taking that turn towards the north and moving here into the very warm waters of the Florida Straits just north of Cuba. So I do want to take you through that 8 a.m. advisory, of course. Uh, we're not going to see any changes to the forecast cone. That won't be until 11 a.m. That's really our next big update in terms of seeing any shifts with the forecast path. But as of 8 a.m., uh, we are seeing that it is a category four with max assuming winds of 130 miles per hour and at this time we do want to speak with the chief hurricane specialist dr michael brennan of the national hurricane center good morning dr brennan morning so we're seeing a few changes with the 8 a.m advisory it's weakened slightly however restrengthening is anticipated can you tell us a little bit about what's happening with irma right now as it is just bearing down on cuba Sure, you know, the Irma is, has scooted along these islands here along the north coast of Cuba, and that's caused the cyclone to weaken a little bit. You can see the eyes a little less distinct, but it's still a very powerful hurricane, and its track over the next uh, day or so is going to take it back out over the very warm waters of the Florida Straits. And so we do anticipate some restrengthening before it reaches the Florida Keys. But uh, I don't want people to focus on the fact that the winds, peak winds have come down. Irma is a very powerful hurricane. Uh, it has uh, hazards over a large area. And even here in south, southeast Florida, metro areas where you know, the track has shifted a little away from us, uh, people might be thinking that we're off the hook, but we're not. We're already starting to see those rain bands come in. The winds are picking up. Conditions are going to deteriorate during the day today. We're going to see a long period of sustained tropical storm force winds and several hours of hurricane force wind gusts. And I don't want people to forget about the storm surge risk. Down here from Boca Raton, southward through Miami-Dade County and the Keys, you can see five to 10 feet of storm surge inundation. It's still a life-threatening situation uh, for people in that storm surge warning area. And if you've been asked to evacuate, uh, I hope you've done so at this point. Dr. Brennan, that is the one thing we have been stressing is that although parts of the southeast coast of the metro areas of South Florida are no longer included in the cone, uh, folks should not focus on the cone or where the center could be headed because we are going to see those impacts regardless since it is such a massive hurricane. Can you just talk about how this hurricane has sustained its strength and the fact that it is still going to be life threatening and quite dangerous for much of the state of Florida? Yeah, I mean, the, the one thing is the cone doesn't tell you anything about impacts. It only tells you where the center of the storm might go. And as if you, you can look on the satellite picture at how big Irma is compared to even the state of Florida. So as it moves up here and makes uh, landfall somewhere on the west coast, we're going to be on the east side of the circulation where actually the stronger, strongest wind field is, uh, some of the heavy rains, all of that onshore flow is going to be pushing that water into that storm surge warning area. So it's, it's still a very, it's a life-threatening situation for many people in the southern, especially the southern southern two-thirds of the state of Florida, uh, uh, it's, uh, and people are going to want to take this storm very seriously. The other thing I wanted to mention is that now that it looks like the core of the hurricane could be just off to our west, the west of the metro areas, let's talk about the rainfall potential is now increasing because it looks like it's going to be a long duration event. We're going to be on that east side, the dirty side, if you will, yep. and that moisture being pumped in. How much rain can we anticipate when all is said and done through Monday here? Well, in the in southeast Florida, uh, much of the Florida Peninsula, we could see 8 to 15 inches with isolated areas seeing as much as 20, especially if this, the center goes up to, uh, west of us. As you mentioned, we're going to get in one of these big feeder bands that can just continue to, to dump rain over the same area. And those bands can occur well after the center has moved all the way up into north Florida. We'll still have that big push of moist, warm air that's going to be causing those rain bands to continue moving up over the Florida Peninsula for the next couple of days. Yeah, hence the flood watch issued for us through a Monday yep. evening, and I'm seeing that flood warnings and watches have been issued really across the entire state. Um, can we talk a little bit about the keys? Because we have folks that yeah. are now starting to evacuate at the last minute and how this could really be a catastrophic situation for our friends, for all of our viewers here in Monroe County. 
Yeah, nobody should be left in the Florida Keys at this point. Uh, Life-threatening storm surge. Those areas are likely to see the core of a major hurricane move across them. So catastrophic wind damage, especially now looking up into the lower and middle keys, uh, that five to 10 feet of storm surge is life-threatening on its own and combine that with the wind. You've got a, just a potentially catastrophic situation developing for the Florida Keys as we go into uh, tonight and early Sunday. Now, it's probably not until late Monday that we'll start to finally see some improving conditions here across South Florida. Right. Yeah. It, uh, by uh, by you know Monday morning, the storm is still going to be centered up here in central Florida. We'll still be experiencing uh, very strong uh, so, so gusty winds, and that's when the rain is going to become a big threat. And even the threat of tornadoes will continue uh, through that time. So Irma is going to be with us here in South Florida for a couple of days. Conditions are only going to deteriorate today. And I, I really want to emphasize: I don't want people to think that that we're off the hook by any stretch and start to go out and try to resume their normal activities as the weather is beginning to deteriorate today. That's right. So everyone should really hunker down now, stay inside, yes. because even with some of these squalls and rain bands, we have the risk of tornadoes. Thank you, Dr. Michael Brennan, for all of your insight. And of course, we appreciate all of your hard work there and all the meteorologists at the National Hurricane Center. All right. So let's get Thanks. right to that advisory and show you what they are forecasting and what the models are indicating as well for Hurricane Irma headed towards the uh, west northwest here and just slamming the northern coast of Cuba at this time. And this is the side of the storm. We've been talking about this for the past few days, how regardless of the fact that a few of the metro areas may not be included in that cone, we are still going to be dealing with the same impacts because of this major hurricane, a monster, massive hurricane that is headed our way. It is forecast to take that turn to the north and overnight tonight into tomorrow morning, uh, we will likely be seeing that Category 4 Hurricane Irma headed towards making landfall or just near here the Keys and then likely continuing northward and could be making another landfall or remain just offshore of the southwest coast as we head into Sunday afternoon and then late Sunday headed towards uh, the Tampa coast potentially as a category three hurricane continuing northward up the state of Florida across the Big Bend and the Panhandle as we get into Monday morning and it's not until Tuesday morning that we will see it become a tropical storm and weaken even more so by the middle to end of next week. That's when we'll find Finally, see it become a depression or an area of low pressure, but not before making its mark across much of the state of Florida and even the southeast. So as we take a look at the highest threat for hurricane force winds, and that red shaded area is encompassing much of the western half of the peninsula right now, and of course the Keys. And as we take a look at what the models are indicating right now, most of them are really starting to come close together and indicate higher confidence in this force forecast track that Irma will move to the west and northwest then take a turn to the north and that is what we're seeing with the European model the GFS model two of our most reliable models here uh, showing that we are indeed likely going to see Irma uh, likely moving across the Keys and then potentially here along the west coast of the state of Florida. So let's go back to this idea of the fact that even though we are not included in the cone we're going to be dealing with these squalls and the tropical storm force winds and potentially hurricane force wind gusts and hurricane force winds certainly for the keys. Uh, we're going to look at the wind field and this yellow shaded area indicating the area where we're going to see those tropical storm force winds, the orange shaded area hurricane force wind gusts and then the red area that is where the worst of the weather, the most destructive winds will be the hurricane force winds uh, ranging from 75 miles per hour or even greater than that. Right now we have reports in Cuba of some winds of 160 miles per hour. So devastating situation there and it could be quite devastating as well for the Keys as right now Irma is forecast to head towards the Keys. We are going to see tropical storm force winds across much of South Florida throughout the day today but the Keys will start to deal with those hurricane force wind gusts as we head into the afternoon and around midnight 1 2 a.m. That is when we'll start to see the core of Irma moving into 
into the Keys. This red shaded area indicating the most destructive hurricane force winds. And then for the rest of South Florida, the metro areas will start to see those hurricane force wind gusts and still dealing with the tropical storm force winds overnight. Hurricane force wind gusts possible for Broward and Dade County. The Keys will be dealing with hurricane force conditions and likely through the morning hours and even into the afternoon for the Keys. Unfortunately, I wish I had better news, but right now that's what the current guidance and models are showing us. And in terms of the metro areas here, Broward and Dade County, even into the afternoon, we will be dealing with hurricane force wind gusts. And then as we head into the evening, still the possibility of dealing with those hurricane force wind gusts. And then it's not until midnight that we'll start to see uh, that drift a little bit more towards the north and head into central and north Florida. So we're going to be dealing with the backside of this system. That's why it is expected to be such a long duration event. And we could be dealing with Irma here for the next uh, 24 to 36 hours. And the biggest threats continue to be extreme wind, life-threatening storm surge, heavy rainfall because we're going to be on the east side, at least the Broward and Miami-Dade County areas, and then down through the Keys, of course, we'll see the highest threat for storm surge and tornadoes also will be possible. Hurricane warnings in place for the central and northwest Bahamas, northern coast of Cuba, and much of the state of Florida. In fact, the southern half of the peninsula is under hurricane warning. Hurricane watches in place for the Big Bend coastline and also the northeast coast. So we do have the storm surge watches and warnings as well.